Uh, welcome and thank you for joining us for another episode of the JN Irrigation Training Series. I'm Richard Rastuccia, Vice President of Water Management Solutions for Jane. And uh, today we're doing another episode of This Month in Water Management Services. And the reason we're doing this is we really want to provide good updates on what the Jane team has been doing for their customers from the water management services side. Uh, I think it's really exciting to see exactly what they do out in the field every month because it changes. I think that everybody who watches this becomes a better water manager as a result of learning from what they're doing. And one thing for sure is, you know, a, a grower sees uh, a, a certain situation uh, during the season and has that experience and moves on to the next one. Our team seeing multiple crops uh, over different situations, over different areas. Uh, they're gaining so much information and they're able, more importantly, to share some information that they have and, and data that they have to uh, and influence a lot of uh, uh, growers from the uh, increased yield side, as well as uh, a more sustainable uh, way to uh, grow. So uh, all that's very exciting. So I'd love to get these uh, uh, monthly updates on that. Uh, this month, uh, Eric Olson, president of Jane Irrigation, is actually giving us or providing this update. You know, uh, for those of you who know Eric, um, he's got a BS in chemical engineering. He also uh, has a master's in business, and he's got a lifelong love and background in agriculture. So we're really happy to see Eric uh, uh, providing this information for us today. Um, and then the other thing about Eric is uh, his passion for water conservation and sustainability is really high. Anybody who's spent any time with him knows that this is a uh, subject that is near and dear to his heart and uh, one that he is very knowledgeable about. And more importantly, he takes all his technology background and pours it into uh, the water management services and how he's helping growers uh, save water and uh, and increase yields, and it's just helping a lot of people. So, Eric, uh, welcome. Thank you for taking time uh, today to join us and do part two here. Yeah, thank you, Richard. Yeah, nice to be here. Nice to uh, talk about the journey we've been on. And, and as, uh, if you remember from Jeff Tool's presentation, uh, we took a lot of steps. We did a lot of uh, distribution uniformity tests. We've done a lot of a lot of work in uh, you know uh, a very short period of time, six to eight weeks. Yeah, absolutely, and it's been uh, it's been just great to watch. I'm so excited anytime I talk to anyone on the team because uh, I've got so many questions for them. You know, I I want to learn from them. Uh, and then one thing I think is really interesting. I mean, you really have a lot to manage uh, with uh, with all the different entities of of Jane in the United States. Uh, you have spent, uh, especially in the past few years, uh, a good deal of your time in ag tech and most importantly in technology and irrigation. Um, well, why is that so? Yeah, I, I really believe this is uh, the, the future of our industry, this uh, ag technology and irrigation technology. And um, we've made significant investments um, in, in those spaces. We've had uh, four, four acquisitions of great size companies that do a significant amount of ag tech, really pioneers of uh, companies that were doing ag and irrigation technology since uh, the early 2000s. And yeah, I believe this is the future. You can see that water is absolutely precious. You, you need to use all these tools to help growers and landscapers manage the precious resources of water, fertilizer, and energy. There's no better way to do it than this uh, type of technology that we're deploying today. Uh, it's been challenging for the newcomers out there to get the technology deployed and uh, to get it scaled up and to make it a good business. And, uh, but we're, we're really uh, putting our money where our mouth is and we're investing in technology. It's a, it's a big part of our company overall. It'll be a big, you know, continuing to uh, grow. Uh, yeah, I'm, and I'm really excited about what the technology is going to uh, allow us to do and how it's going to help our customers. Yeah, so if I, if I have this correct, uh, Jane Logic has really been around since about 2005, collecting data, soil moisture data on various crops in the Central Valley and other places in the U.S. and the world, but most importantly, the Central Valley for, for what you're doing for water management services. And uh, I think the team's able to use that data, gather that real historical data to make decisions. Is that, is that right? Yeah, that, that's correct. Uh, PeerSense was one of the, uh, well, really one of the original pioneering companies in soil moisture monitoring, 
really the first company to scale in a big way, uh, starting in California on permanent crops. And they've been uh, collecting large scale amounts of data on soil moisture and weather on the farm, uh, providing irrigation schedules and recommendations, yeah, since 2005, 2006. Uh, many growers remember that name, Pearson. They, they uh, invested a significant amount of money building the software and the hardware, and they're known today as still having the best software in the business. And it's really a complete agronomic tool today. Uh, many of the uh, key technologists that developed the product are still with the company and helping us uh, with this leadership position. Yeah, that's an amazing amount of data. And uh, when you think about technology, that is a really long time. Uh, and I know for some people, it maybe doesn't feel like a, a lifetime or anything, but when it comes to technology and data, it really is a, a lifetime of data. So that, that's fantastic. You know, when, when we looked at uh, acquiring uh, PeerSense, we, we could see the value of that data, the, the value of watching water move through a soil profile and seeing the infiltration rate and knew that this was going to be meaningful at some point. And uh, we, we knew, we heard this story back in the early 2010 period, this discussion about big data. And from 2010 to today, uh, you could see all these big data applications, machine learning and, and artificial intelligence. And we're able to, we're, we're now taking advantage of those incredible uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning tools to provide uh, irrigation techniques. So, you know, I'm happy to say we're going we're gonna to demo this today. And we're really the, the first company that's bringing together uh, soil moisture data, local on-farm uh, weather data, weather analytics, uh, imagery from satellites to calculate ETC, not just bigger, and we bring those three together along with using this machine learning to give an irrigation schedule all in one package. Um, many startups have to go, you know, and sell one piece of this uh, part of the equipment, and we pull it all all into one into Jane Logic. So I'm really happy and grateful that the developers have made this tool even better today. That's really great. All the different uh, inputs somebody can have at their fingertips to uh, to make decisions about water. So speaking of that, the team's been busy with uh, the water management services customers. Uh, can you kind of give us an idea of what they've been busy with uh, since uh, the start of the season? Yeah, so uh, you can see my screen, Richard, if that yeah. slide advance. It looks great. Yeah, so... Um, you know, Jeff Tool gave a great update uh, last month about, you know, what was done, all the distribution studies. And so, so just to summarize uh, Jeff's 40-minute you know, uh, lunch and learn in, in, a, in a quick slide here, uh, we picked uh, 10 progressive leading growers in a variety of geographies and crops, and we had initial grower meetings to really learn about why they'd be interested in this water management, really craft a program that those growers would be happy with. We set out to do distribution uniformity tests on all those farms. We provided a very comprehensive hyper-analyzed reports, which gives them uh, a, a yield distribution, yield study. Uh, it, gave, it gave them a five-year water use history by month. It gave a two-year history of water distribution, and so we could use that to make a water budget for the coming year. All that comes from the satellite imagery in, in our agrologics uh, package, part of Jane Logic. Uh, we put in a lot of field gear. Uh, our good good friend uh, Santino uh, Bianchi, he, he was out there making sure we had beautiful installs on all the water management customers. And then, you know, our account managers, uh, Connor, Stephen, and David Lindsay, just did a tremendous job, uh, along with Corey Broad, uh, you, you've seen him, um, you know, providing these uh, weekly schedules and very comprehensive water management reports. This is really the meat. A every week there's some unique issue on the farm that we're, we're seeing. And before those uh, reports come out, there's actually usually a phone call and a discussion because the, the grower knows this property better than we ever will. And so we say, look, here's what we're seeing. Here's what the technology is showing. Uh, here's what we're recommending. What do you think? What are you seeing on the ground? In many cases, then we have to go to the field and, and see that with them. But 
through this discussion, we iterate a little bit and then give a, a weekly irrigation schedule. So that's really what we've been up to. That's really fantastic. You know, if I think back um, in, in my history, I think about any time, you know, I tried a new sport or a sport and I hired a coach to help me or had a coach to help me. I got better at that sport more quickly when I had somebody to one-on-one -on -one, uh, figure it out with instead of learning on my own. Same in uh, college classes, right? I've had a particularly tough class. I hired a tutor for that class and I did better. I learned more and it happened more quickly. So uh, that, that's one thing I see here is these guys are really the growers coach uh, as well as um, providing water management services. Yeah, correct. I, you know, I, I think about this and, and, you know, the first bullet point there on this slide is the growers have huge challenges, right? That, that they got to understand soils, water sources, they got to do power management, they got to be chemical engineers, they got to be agronomists and understand plants, they got to be market, the marketers of their crops. Very difficult. They're really super sharp people to be able to figure out all this. Now, when we as salespeople of irrigation equipment or technology come to the grower and want to sell some latest monitoring tool uh, with its own login and sign up and password, you know, that, that grower has to learn that technology. And so imagine if you have 15 of these people coming to peddle the latest irrigation technology. Very difficult for the grower, even if it's like an Apple device, you know, it just, you need to turn it on. It just needs to work. But, you know, our irrigation technology hasn't been that way. We are trying to make it that way with Jane Logic, where it's intuitive. But what's intuitive to us when we're using these tools might not be intuitive to, say, a farmer who's juggling things and has 30 seconds to look at Jane Logic. So we do our best really to uh, make this intuitive, uh, easy, simple fast, secure, uh, mobile. Uh, that's really what the developers at Jane Logic ha have done. And, you, you know, you can see uh, uh, ag technology adoption has had real, real challenges. And, you know, why is that? And why are some people successful with this and, and others are not? Well, one, you really got to, it, it's got to be simple, easy to use. You got to demonstrate value and you got to get an, an ROA on for the grower and you got to think about the grower number one so so you know what's been our approach when we see this technology adoption issue is we we came up with this water management service business to be like the coach where we can support them in their irrigation decisions for for however whatever level of support they want we can make an irrigation schedule for them and they can you know irrigate to that they can adjust we can coach them and say, here's what we're seeing. You know, it's, it's really the grower's call at the end of the day, and we're, we're there in a supporting uh, coach's role, and we, we want to get a great value uh, for, for the growers. So today, you know, this, this offering, not only Jane Logic, but our water management, it's really a, it's a differentiated solution. It's a, a one-stop shop for uh, the Jane Logic growers. Um, we, we, again, are the ones that have a you know, well, weather station satellite imagery, including uh, vigor and ETC calculations. We have uh, dendrometer plug-in capability if you want to listen to your trees. We have water accounting budget tools if you want to, you know, manage your, your water accounting or value of the water, we can do that. We can manage your power bill, you know, so there's so many things that we can do. You don't need to go to 10 or 15 other uh, startups or small companies because, and we can even then automate the, the systems, right? So we have uh, one-stop shop capability, lowest cost of ownership, the data and information we're providing is really second to none. It's really a phenomenal place to be. When you invest in hardware and software with Jane, it's got complete flexibility. It can do monitoring uh, and or control. You're not, and so because we're a larger company, uh, a larger entity has some financial strength that others may not have in the startup world. Um, the, the farmer's investment with us is is really much safer than, say, a smaller startup company. Yeah, I'm so glad you made that reference to to uh, other technology uh, entities, right? Because I I'm looking at this picture of Santino, and uh, uh, he's got the um, uh, telemetry device and the solar power, and I think. 
who could put, uh, who could strap a computer or a phone on a metal pole out in a field and leave it there for a few years and still expect it to work? Uh, it, it just wouldn't happen. But uh, I know your products, you know, they're less than half of 1% uh, any issues. I mean, it's really, uh, that is amazing. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask though about the equipment, when you, when you're, when you sign up for water management services, do you buy the equipment? Is it included? How does that work? Yeah, the, uh, the, the initial idea was uh, to find uh, 10 very progressive growers in different geographies and, and uh, crops and soil, soil and weather conditions and, and uh, you know, sign those growers up uh, to a water management program where we would work hand in hand with them and do our best to help them and use and understand the technology. And uh, for $40 an acre, uh, we would outfit the technology like it was our own spend. We're spending our own money with the grower. We're acting like we're the grower and we're going to put the technology on that farm at our cost and only charge $40 an acre uh, for that season. Now we had certain minimums on uh, sizes, but we, we did that and we're, we put hardware out there. We did installs like that was going to be there forever because we know we can help save water, fertilizer, energy, grow an amazing crop and, and help that grower if we can just, you know, partner and get the time and do the training and development and, and supporting that grower. Uh, so that, that's what we did. That The hardware was installed on our dime. We're uh, hoping that, you know, the initial 10 customers continue on uh, with us. They have the option to continue on at, at a, you know, certain rate, uh, or they can buy the equipment at the end of the year, if they've learned enough where they're happy and say, hey, I got this, this is pretty easy, and that's what we want. We want them to say, wow, I love the software, super easy, I got this, thank you for the help. That would be, make us really happy like we did a good job. Some may say, wow, I, I really like this uh, second set of eyes, looking at all my fields every week, seeing where the water is going, how, what's happening with the fertilizer, what's happening with my crop. I would love that for a very low cost. You got me, Connor, Jeff, Stephen, Corey, uh, Santino, uh, Ashley, uh, David, all looking at these growers' fields every you know couple times a week, making a, reports and recommendations. I mean, who wouldn't want that for forty bucks an acre? Yeah, it's really a tremendous partnership, uh, and and I really appreciate that. The other thing I was wondering though. Um, uh, the, uh, the, the, the 10 customers, why did you stop there? I know we had lots more that wanted to sign up and uh, we, we, we didn't make room for them. Why didn't we? Well, you, you know me, I wanted to do uh, more, but uh, the team says, uh, let's do a great job at 10 and we want to keep all 10 and we want them to love Jane Logic and, and continue on with the technology. Uh, you know, the, the initial, um, push was distribution studies in all these different fields, getting the, all the hardware out there. It was really a bottleneck because of when we introduced the, the offering and the time of the year and getting the hardware and all the reports done. We are really now at a great steady state and we, we can handle uh, more customers into the water management services. So if people are watching this and are interested yeah, please contact us. We, we uh, you know, we'd love to help you, especially in a year like this with the drought. This technology can really help you save every drop of water if you're, you're under a real uh, tight situation. Uh, we did recently hire uh, two new people that are going to join the JAME team. They're actually starting Monday, a very experienced uh, irrigation professional, mechanical engineer, CID, 20, 30, 30 years actually in irrigation. And then we hired a, a younger gentleman who will start with us he was doing irrigation scheduling on a large uh, farming operation, I think around 10,000 acres. He was actually handling the irrigation scheduling uh, for that grower and a variety of crops. So he's going to fit right in. These guys are really going to help us, uh, you know, continue to provide good service to more customers. So if you're interested, please, uh, please reach out to us. Yeah, it's exciting to see. Um, love, love to see the growth of the personnel and the customers. So uh, it's getting hot out there. We're getting ready to be at peak season for water in a pretty short time. I know everybody's focused on irrigation scheduling. Um, what uh, what are the other things that your team is doing right now, or how are they doing the scheduling? What's what's the focus right now? 
Yeah, the big the big thing, you know, and you can see the title of the slide and the really the focus of this presentation, and I'll do a, a demo on this, is providing weekly irrigation schedules and recommendations for the growers. And that that's really what this webinar is about. I want to uh, keep you in the, walk you along the path of what our account managers do weekly for the growers and how they generate an irrigation schedule for a grower, how they use the tools, and how they walk this forward. So that's the, the, uh, the demonstration here that, that we'll have. You know, the, before I get into the specifics and the demo of what we actually do, I just want to stress that if you're considering uh, uh, water management services or automation or technology, I think the first step we've learned is focused on your distribution uniformity. This is uh, how uniformly you're applying the water. Uh, that's the denominator of the water efficiency equation. You got to spend time to make sure your current baseline system is operating as uniformly as possible applying that water. And, and you know, for this requirement, we, for water management services, we said we, we really need a 0.85 DU or better. I think our average uh, DU test we did of the quick DU study was a 0.91. Uh, but we, you need a 0.85 or better. If it was me, I'd uh, definitely shoot for above 0.90 before you're doing this. The, the second thing before you create an irrigation schedule is many people had the application rate of the emission devices labeled maybe not correctly. And it's as simple as, you know, in drip irrigation uh, in your yard, did you put a half gallon or one gallon emitter at 12 inch spacing, right? Well, that's double the amount of water if you get it wrong. Um, you know, is, is what's the flow rate of my sprinkler or jet, or is the emitter line a 0.4 gallon versus a 0.5? These little things really add up. So the application rate is a denominator value as well when you think about how long do you need to run. So those two things, those, those are big takeaways. You've got to understand your DU. You've got to know what the application rate of your system is. Uh, meeting with growers, a lot of them would ha have some system constraints. Well, I only get water on these days from the district, or I, I want to avoid the peak power uh, period, PG&E, 5 to 9. I'm not going to pump then because the power is super expensive. Um, meeting with the grower to understand their goals. Some want to save water, fertilizer, and energy. Some want to maximize yield. Some have problems with soils or, or salinity or salts that are affecting their crops and want to manage that. When we talk about irrigation methods, uh, oftentimes as irrigators, we talk about a replenishment method. Replenishment method would be if we had ET in uh, one, one week, then the next week we would replace that amount of water. That's a replenishment method for ET. Now, another way to look at that, it's, it's getting hotter and ET is going to increase. So a forecast method might be better while it's heating up. Forecast method means you're looking at ETO, the upcoming weather events times KC, and you're going to be ahead of hot weather. You're getting ahead versus behind. Uh, you know, this time of year, my, my lawn tur is turning a little bit crispy, right, because Maybe I'm doing replenishment versus looking at the forecast. So different ways of looking at this. And, and I really call this the triangle of management. It's look, you should look at the replenishment value, the forecast value, and the grower and ground truthing. This is really a, a, a triangle you need to manage. You can't manage this or help a grower from the office. You have to go out there and you have to dig in the soil to see really what's happening in the ground and talk to the grower. Uh, that's the best. That's the best triangulation. So looking ahead, looking behind, and looking under the ground. This triangle is very important. Um, then you know when when you talk with a grower and you figure out, oh, I'm going to use a combo of replenishment and forecast. And let's say you have a you know you need to irrigate 48 hours. That's what you decide for the week. Are you going to put all 48 hours on in one slug? And you're going to do it on a Saturday and Sunday because it's cheap power or free power, right, whatever that is. Now, that might be okay from uh, meeting that requirement, but if you're not looking at the soil moisture sensors, soil moisture probes, you could be wasting up to 20% or more of that water. It could blow right past the root zone. 
and you can see this in soil moisture sensors. So the timing and duration of irrigation events is, is, uh, is super important to get right, and I'll we'll demo that in a second. And then, you know, look, stuff happens. Uh, the, all these models and things that we're doing, um, they're not perfect. And, you know, if we use machine learning model and we have some overfitting problem or something, uh, we, we need to look at the model and say, what did it predict and what actually happened? How is this model working? Go check it in the field. So we have to monitor and adjust. So first step every week in our schedule is say, okay, last week we said we would need to irrigate 35 hours. We irrigated 34 hours. What happened? Right? That's first step. So these, these are the processes. I put some screenshots there of uh, some of the uh, tools that come in the Hyper Analyze report. This is a an ETC trend by year, by month, that top graph, and you can see those are young trees uh, that are, uh, you know, growing there. And that fifth year, you can see it's really ET. The, e the peak ET is happening in July every year, as I talked about. That bottom uh, graph shows a five-year bar graph. That helps us for water budgeting. You know, you can see that, you know, there's, I think, 40 inches of water roughly was the last two-year budget. But if you have a growing orchard, you know, that average might not be right, right? So for this coming year, you might use that and say, I need to budget 45 inches of water. That's my water budget, and it's going to follow this profile, right? That's, so that's one of the tools we start with on the hyperanalyze report. Okay, so how do, how do we do this, right? How do we give an irrigation schedule? I just said you know, what, what's important, but let's get into the uh, details of actually what we're going to do. Okay, so I'm not going to read these. I'm going to actually demo them pretty quickly. But uh, again, we want to look at the schedule for compliance. If we said run 35 hours, that's uh, bullet point A there, did we run 35 hours? Uh, point B is we're going to use the satellite imagery to get an ETC calculation. How much water did the crop uh, have uh, transpiration on plus the evaporation. Uh, that's the actual amount, and then 90% of the crop had ET of X, and then we get a uniformity number on that as well. Uh, and that's like distribution uniformity, but it's a, a crop trans ET transpiration uh, uniformity. We're going to look at crop vigor and uh, see, make sure that's responding well, and we can look at the changes one week and four week on vigor. We're going to look at the prior week's weather forecasting. Uh, Richard, you and I are from the uh, era when weather forecasts, when we grew up, were always wrong and wildly wrong, right? Weather forecasts today are amazing compared to what we had as kids. <laughs> it was always wrong, and we joked about how wrong it was. They never got the timing right. They never got the precipitation right. It was always wrong. Weather today is phenomenal compared to... I, I can, uh, I, I know when it's going to rain, I can, you know, when they say 30% chance of rain, I know I can go golf and it's going to get sprinkled on, right? And I know the exact hour and you can watch. So weather's phenomenal today. So the weather tools that we have for growers uh, are, are in this package and make a big difference. Uh, we also want to look at the coming weeks, and this is for the forecast uh, method of irrigating. We want to see what weather is coming. Is it going to be hot, dry, and windy? What's the ET going to be? And we want to make sure if we're doing forecast irrigation that we're uh, giving enough water to meet that in that forecast. We want to look at the prior week's irrigation events to see how the infiltration rate went. If we put 48 inches on all in one slug, how much went past the root zone, went down past 48 inches? Uh, how much uh, made it to the root zone? So we want to visit that. And sometimes there's, there's challenges with soil moisture sensing. Maybe... Uh, it looks like we're irrigating a ton, but that soil moisture sensor is just not moving or acting properly. Then we have to go to the field and really check this out. Um, we, G is talking with the grower and looking, you know, last week, here's what we did, you know, w what do we think is going to happen in this coming week and giving some idea, you know, and, and discussing with the grower. Uh, H is the, the, the key math for this. Uh, we have the irrigation requirement. This can be in uh, inches or time or hours, right? And then you divide it by the application rate, which is a amount per hour, and then you divide it by the DU. So those two denominators that I said were important, the DU and application rate, those are going to help drive the number of hours. So you've got a poor DU. That's a denominator of a denominator. That's really going to impact your uh, time you have to irrigate. So is the application rate. Um, so we'll go through those calculations in, in a bit. 
we do have a proprietary machine learning model where we're using this 15 years of soil moisture data to help uh, monitor and manage water movement through soil. This is a huge advantage for us compared to what others might be offering. And we utilize, utilize that tool, and I'll, I'll demonstrate that as well. And, you know, we get an, an optimized uh, schedule then, and uh, we, we hope it's good, and then we go, go about uh, executing. So Eric, we've got a we've got a question coming in from one of the viewers, and I just want to remind everybody the chat and Q and A is open, and I'll get those questions to uh, Eric when appropriate. But so you guys create the schedule, and then do you just email it to the grower? Do you have a meeting? Do you get together? How, how does that work? What's that look like if I'm a I'm a grower? Yeah, it's a it's a it's a combination. Um, the the growers that we we have growers that are really all over the map on this. We have some that a phone call to say, hey, I looked at all the data, here's what I'm seeing, are you seeing the same thing in Logic? And uh, I think we should run for 24 hours uh, this week. And the grower says, okay, yeah, I see that. Or, or no, I don't. Yeah, the soil looks too dry or the water's not moving like I projected, it's gonna be really hot or I'm spraying. You know, let's, let's run 20 hours this week. They agree upon 20 hours, they agree upon how they're gonna run it. The account manager from Jane will put that schedule in Jane Logic, so they have a record of their discussion. And then the grower goes and executes uh, that that schedule. Um, others, um, you know, will take our weekly report. It's a very comprehensive report, and uh, where we basically write out all of our thought logic on paper. Here's all of our thoughts laid out. This is what. So that is a beautiful record. Our team does an amazing job at uh, putting down our thinking so there's no black box in someone's head uh, that says that you can, so again, the idea of training and how we're using this technology to help, and, and it, you know, look, if it's not working and the grower says, I don't buy this or it didn't work, the grower is going to help us get better and figure out how we can make this technology better and easier. That's why we gave this you know, introductory rate of $40. We're working together to make this better for future growers. Yeah, that's awesome. I know everybody's uh, excited to take a look at the software. Okay, so we love live demos, right? And all that can happen. So you can see my demo screen. Yeah, it looks great. Um... Okay, so what, what I'm going to do is uh, walk you through a, a site here. This is the Jane Logic dashboard. It's really the, the best in the industry and, and uh, you know, it does all those things I was talking about earlier. And I'm going to walk you through A through J, what our team does to create an irrigation schedule, a water management tool for the grower and how they go about that. So first thing, they could come to a site here and, and uh, you know, I'm going to look at, uh, let's look at this almond block here. So this is that highlighted block there. You can see it's almonds. And, uh, you know, it's got this kind of uh, brownish color. That means the soil moisture is okay. You know, not too high, not too, not too low. If it's low, it's red. If it's, if it's blue, it's flooded. And I'm going to click this, and I'm going to look at last week's observed ET. So I go click on last week's observed ET. And you see how quickly and efficiently I get this ET map. You can see how uniform that grayish blue color is. And when I just put my cursor over, I can see the ETC, the crop, that field had uh, 90 percentile ET of 1.4 inches. So that field used 1.4 inches of water per acre per that field. The ETC average in the field was 1.1 inches. So there's a normal distribution usually here. And the ET uniformity then is 80, 89%. So, you know, that's interesting. It may or may not be interesting. For this almond block, it may be not too interesting because it looks fairly uniform. But there's some areas down here that might be a little more blue that I might want to look at. If you look at this field here, this happens to be citrus. You can see that there's more bluer areas here in that citrus field, right? And there's more whiter areas. This uniformity of this citrus area is 80. 84%, so not quite as uniform, and you know, you're going to have a, a higher ET. So I might look at these and say, so, so keep in mind, remember this number, 1.4 inches of water, that was the uh, water that Evapo transpired from the satellite imagery and weather services from the AgriLogic. So if I'm going to do replenishment, how much do I got to put on? 
1.4 inches divided by the DU, right? And I'm going to then cover, uh, I'm going to be covered on about 89, 88, 89% because the DU, again, was the average of the lower quartile of the application divided by the average of the field. So I got to put 1.4 inches divided by uh, 0.9 if my DU is 0.9. That's the replenishment method. So remember that number. Now, since I'm here, I'm just going to look at bigger real quick just to see if we see anything. Keep an eye on this spot over here. There's a little blue here. Let's see if we see anything on bigger. And, you know, we do. Uh, we could see a little, bit of, uh, a little bit of yellow right here. Uh, that is uh, more vigorous than the other areas. So it had more ET going on, and it has better vigor in this lower corner. And the vigor for this field is a 0.31, which is pretty low right now for almonds. You would expect to maybe be a 0 0.55, 0 0.6 at this time of year. And it's fairly uniform. So this would concern me a little bit. You know, I'd expect the field to look more like this up here. So I would be wondering what happened with this field. Why is that vigor so low? You know, is it weather? Was there some uh, chemical application applied? Uh, did they spray spray something down? What what happened here? So uh, because I got a, a poor vigor number, I might click and say, well, how is the vigor changing? I would click short-term vigor change. Sure enough, in one week, we got basically the whole field uh, took a dive in vigor. So something, you know, happened. You can see the other side, uh, all the fields are, are improving on vigor. Right, but so something happened for this whole field. I would go to the grower and say, "Wow, what happened last week?" And he said, "Oh, no problem. I did X, Y, Z." Right? I would expect that. So we could see these things from the satellite. We also have a long-term vigor, also, you know, and and you could see the fields on the left look great. You know, when you ever, ever you see little hot spots here that are different, you might go to the field and investigate what those spots are. You know, when we have uh, vigor, we can even you know zoom in closer. And we could say uh, these are uh, 10 by 10 meter uh, pixels, so 30 foot by 30 foot, and we can really, you know, dive into some areas just to see the difference. So, all right. So from this, we know that we have 1.4 inches divided by the DU that we would have to do for uh, replenishment. Um, now let's go look at. Um, look at the weather, right? The weather would be for the forecast, right? We have the weather, the ETO times KC um, for the coming week, right? And that would be forecast. If we're trying to, the weather is getting hot, temperatures are increasing, we have to irrigate ahead of this heat that's coming, right? We don't want our trees to be stressed early in the season. We want to get ahead of it. So what would we do? We would look at the irrigation schedule and it, we would get a calculation. But first, I want to, on this irrigation schedule tab, I'm going to look at the past, last week. So last week, Jay, we, through our water management services, said you should irrigate 39 hours. We agreed with the grower, we're going to do 39 hours. We gave a schedule on how to fill those 39 hours, you know, nine hours each day for a few days, right? That's what we, this, we gave. The forecast with ET times KC for the coming weather, the forecast said we only needed 33 hours, but maybe we did um, 39 hours because maybe we were looking at agrologics and it said 1.4 inches divided by 0.9 for DU uh, gives us 39 hours. Maybe that's why we recommend 39 hours. So what, what happened last week in the field? the actual irrigation hours were 45 hours, or sorry, 55 hours, so uh, a huge amount more. And uh, so one, we wanted to ask why, you know, why did uh, someone forget to turn off the pump? And then we'll um, look at that. So this is what happened last week, so keep this in mind also. Uh, we wanted 39 hours, the forecast said 33, Agrologics probably said 30, you know, 39, 40, and we did 54, whoops. Right, so we have to find out why that happened. So now with the weather that's coming, and I'll scroll down 
uh, to the weather. Here's the weather forecast here. Here's the, the solid line is the forecast ETO for Delano, California. The dotted line is the prior year. So we are ETing higher than the prior year by a lot, 20, 20 to 25 percent more ET this week than last year. So that's a huge difference. Uh, we can look at the max temp that's coming. We can look at the minimum temp, and we can look at the wind that's coming. So it's going to be windier. You can see that. It may be a little warmer. And the humidity. The humidity and the wind are driving the ETO forecast. So very low humidity compared to the prior year. Last year is very humid for that area, 60%. Now it's probably more normal in the 30, mid-30s. So the humidity and the wind are driving this ETO being 20, so it's not just temperature, humidity, wind, and there's, you know, I always hear from our good friends, uh, Jane Unity, and, and the ET equation, like 17 factors going into the ET calculation, and I think we got the, probably the top six here. So this is how we would uh, do the forecast. So based on this coming weather, Jane Logic is calculating automatically for us to put on 36 hours. Last week, was 33. That's what it's calculating, right? Now, why did we pick 39 uh, last week? Well, we probably went with uh, a replenishment method. We looked at agrologics and we did that calculation. And so let's just go through that calculation then on agrologics. So if you remember that number that I got from over here on the uh, that almond block, it was 1.4 inches on the 90th percentile. I know from this irrigation system, because we did a DU study, that the application rate is 0 0.037 inches per hour. So you take 1.4 inches divided by 0 0.037 inches per hour and divide that by the DU, that's going to give you the hours for the week that you need to irrigate. That will spit out 42 hours, 42 hours. So to replenish, the water that the satellite says was evapotranspired, I got to run 42 hours just to do replenishment. If I'm looking at the forecast, it's telling me, and forecast is ETO times KC, could have the KC wrong and weather might fluctuate a little bit, although we said weather's pretty good. It gives me 36 hours. So as a water management specialist, this is where you call the grower and say, look, your crop looks like your field's got a bigger issue. Um, and if we're doing replenishment, it's 42 hours. If it's um, forecast, it's 36. Uh, maybe we split the difference, or it's early in the season. We do not want to get behind. Let's go 42 hours so we're at least doing replenishment. Do not get behind until after July 10th. Then you could maybe, because you're on the backside, maybe you could afford some risk. But right now, let's go 42 hours. And uh, so, again, to my earlier point, how do we put those 42 hours of irrigation? Do we just run Saturday, Sunday, 42 hours straight? Well, probably not. We want to look at infiltration rate. And if we run long sets, where does the water go down to what level in the root zone? So almonds might have active roots in the 18 to 36-inch uh, uh, root zone area. And this infiltration chart uh, shows um, irrigation events. Those are the light blue bars. The green band is the root zone, and we want those irrigation events that are happening to land in the root zone. You can see this irrigation event over here. The irrigation event alone was 72 hours there. And how far did the water go down? It went past 60 inches. 60 in inches is the limit of the probe. We probably lost 25% of that water. We carried with it nitrogen, and we burned energy for no reason. So we don't want to do that again. So the next irrigation that happened here, this irrigation went to, went to 36 inches. It was 58 hours. So you can see that. And so uh, just by hovering over, we can see the depth in which the, uh, the, the <clears throat> irrigation penetrated. Correct. <laughs> and the, uh, the other question we had coming in, Eric, uh, just a few minutes ago, and it has to do with this uh, vigor photo that we're looking at on the uh, image on the bottom left-hand corner, 
if I was driving by in my truck or even walking by that field, um, would I actually see the bigger difference? Uh, you know, uh, like, likely that, you know, growers would, would notice this difference that we were talking about there. But um, very, very hard to see that the satellites and aerial imagery uh, tools are going to see this far sooner than we will. And maybe you wouldn't be able to see this weekly change, but if you didn't do anything and this went on for five weeks like this, for sure that, that tree is going to suffer. And when you see it, it's too late. It's too late to do anything. So that's yeah, why what, we... What a, what a great peace of mind tool, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. The imagery is going to be an early capture. We're looking at the water in the, in the soil profile to help us manage that. So we could see this last irrigation was actually a little bit better, right? 36 to 48 inches, still maybe a little long. That was a 47 hour irrigation. So in our minds, we just said, we, we want to put on 42 hours of irrigation, right? We, we, we see that um, 72 hours straight is way too much. We wasted a quarter of everything, water, fertilizer, energy. We see that 47 hours is a little better, but probably still too long. Water went to 48 inches. If this grower says, hey, I want to manage it to 36 inches, what's the, what would I schedule? Well, we could all guess. Maybe we cut it in half. Maybe we do uh, two 20-hour sets instead of one single. Or you could go, um, you know, eight hours a day for, for uh, you know, six and, a half, six and a half days, something like that. So that's where we're going to now use all of this soil moisture information we've collected over the years in a proprietary machine learning tool to help us um, with our irrigation schedule to get the timing and duration so we can land the water right where we want it, right at 36 inches. So remember, I got 42 inches to apply. If I go to the soil moisture machine learning prediction model, and I got the almond block east here, and I'm creating a schedule for this week, and I know I need 42 hours, and here I type in nine hours on the 18th, eight hours, 10 hours, nine hours, six hours. I hope I added that up to 42 hours. Uh, someone could probably do quick math and tell me I'm close. It took me a little trial and error, and what I'm looking for is this wetting front down here. I want to see that, to, you know, get to, uh, maybe 24, 24 inches, 24 to 36 inches. I, I really like to see that. I don't want to see it go past 48 to 60. Then I know I'm wasting. So it took me, uh, you know, a few minutes to find the schedule that's going to keep water in the active root zone where the grower tells me that is. So that's uh, the machine learning tool. If I wanted to change this slightly, um, let's just try uh, something different and we're going live with this. This is always fun. We said 42 hours. Let's see if we do 42 hours and we do it all on, well, 42 hours is not available in one day, is it? So we'd have to do uh, 24 and 18. Let's see what happens. Hopefully it blows up. Yeah, so the one prior did uh, did come to 42, but and, and somebody can just plug in numbers and adjust and really see uh, that wedding pattern and it will also take into account the forecast at ET. Correct. So I just plugged in 24 and 18. That's 42 hours. I did it over two days where we had that problem last time. And down here you can see it's predicting it's going to go past 60 inches really for two and a half, three days. So I, we know from that this, this is, would not be a good schedule. And we, we actually ran 57 hours, right? So that would be like 24... 48, so nine. So run it again. And here we go. Look how bad that is. So wow. that's exactly what happened. So this predictor then really allows us to get the water right exactly where, where you want it. It's a proprietary tool. Uh, we're really excited about closing the loop uh, on this that we can use the satellite imagery, the weather forecasting, we can handle replenishment or forecast, we can manage the water in the root zone. Uh, really excited, and, and this is what our team goes through uh, each week to give our growers that are part of the WMS, they give them an irrigation schedule, 
and uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're doing it. And then they'll write a report to say what they did, what they went through, say, hey, I got a bigger, bigger challenge, uh, here's the schedule for the week, um, and then there's a dialogue, and then there, we uh, re record and log all this. So that's, that's uh, the tools, but very comprehensive tools, so let's just go uh, do this then. And then. There is another webinar where David Lindsay does a fabulous job uh, uh, about how to use the advanced scheduler. There's also another webinar where Connor shows how to use Forecast ET for better water management. Uh, if you're interested, you can uh, go there. But let's just say we were going to do these 42 hours. I forget what it was exactly, but let's do Monday. And maybe we said Tuesday's eight hours. And, and I'm just adding this. And I think it was like nine hours, something like that. So. Seven. So here's our 42, 42 hours, um, and then I. So that's all I do. I can put the time, and then, and then I can save it, and I can. Uh, so now here's here's the uh, uh, s schedules. Then, well, didn't like something here. Maybe I did something wrong. I got the dates nope. right. So it's on showing on the 17th. 17th has passed, so you can see see that. So it, it's red. Red's already done, so you can see it didn't like that. I, I go, wow, I've never seen red before. <laughs> That's because it's Tuesday, or sorry, it's Wednesday the 19th, so I'd have to go. Uh, you, you get the idea. Right. Um, and I should have picked the days here and say, uh, yeah, uh, Thursday, uh, eight hours, you know, and then I'm going to add uh, Friday, eight hours. But you, you get the idea. And then uh, once I save it, you're going to see these these orange lines. Those are the scheduled hours, eight hours scheduled, and the blue is the actual. Again, there's a, a full webinar on how to use that tool. So that that's the process. That's the final step uh, that our, our team will uh, do for that. And uh, that's a quick demo uh, with Jane Logic and, and really trying to show what we actually do. Part of this water management business. Really, the second step is is the the scheduling. And, uh, you know, it's pretty interesting. We're, we're going to get hotter. The vigor is going to be changing. The irrigation requirements are changing. The timing and duration now are super critical. So the next six weeks are going to be really uh, very exciting for us to work with growers really managing this water um, in, in a pretty uh, awesome way. Yeah, so Eric, uh, we have time for a couple last questions and then I know we, we want to see uh, you know what the future holds for uh, automation as well. Uh, one of the questions that came in is what crops does this work on? Do, am I limited by what I'm growing to, to use uh, Jane Logic or water yeah. management services? You know it's uh, we asked for 10 customers to go on this journey with us and I think we got uh, 10 different crops. I mean we have uh, uh, walnuts, pistachios, almonds, watermelons, tomatoes, cherries, and yeah, I think that, that's it. So per permanent high value crop is gonna be where you can get a, get a return, uh, but you could, you could see the return here is uh, water savings, energy, fertilizer, just a better, better way of growing. We, we think we're gonna, we're gonna help growers get, get good yield. We think we're gonna help them spot problems really quick. We're gonna help them if there's a design problem or they're burning pressure, we're going to be able to help those uh, growers with that. So for sure, we're going to save uh, money, and we hope we can help them get a better yield and just be a part of their team to do that. Yeah, that's so cool. So, uh, so where are we headed? What's next in this uh, irrigation technology? Yeah, I, ideally, we can take all these tools and have it do this work automatically for us, do the calculation of uh, replenishment or forecast, given hours, you, you know, do, use that machine learning model to get those days and hours of irrigation for me so I get the water right in the root. And this just happens. Now, it, we, we're not going totally at, autonomous. Uh, You've you got to go to the field. There's all you got to be um, digging in the soil to validate this. So no matter, uh, I do believe we're going to have autonomous irrigation. We have it on the turf landscape side. You're at you sell this, Jane Unity, the ET water software. We have 8,000 customers that are, you know, automatically irrigating turf grass and landscapes, and it's working really well. It all comes from the weather and the forecast, and we have the discussion of replenishment or forecast, and that's all happening autonomously. 
agriculture is a little different. We've got to look at that soil profile and, and that. And, and so we've got a few more inputs to add, and we've got to refine this. But we're going towards autonomous. It's, it'll help us. It'll help growers save labor. Uh, but you're always going to need labor in the field there to you know, check these drip lines. Uh, we will go to var variable rate. That's coming. Uh, precision irrigation, we got better tools to handle that. You can see those hot spots in the field. Maybe it's a soil issue, right? Maybe we would want to put different application rates on, on that. So that's really what precision is about. Um, these tools can be used for grower profit optimization. I think the advancements in machine learning and AI, you know, are, these are, these are going to definitely help us. I see the advantages there. And, uh, you know, I'm just excited about continuing to uh, help uh, support and uh, work on training, and this is a, a great training program. You know, the final comment there, and I put a little uh, note that um, this came from Blue Diamond and their sustainability incentive program. And, it, you know, it says uh, the customers and consumers are demanding sustainable practices. And um, th their program here, this sustainability incentive program, um, they're going to give, Blue Diamond is going to pay growers more if they're using sustainable practices. And number five on the list is irrigation management. Well, what we're doing, this qualifies uh, for uh, uh, points here, and there's a series of points, and they're following the uh, Almond Board of California, their CAS program. And if, if you can get through the silver level, which includes irrigation management, you could make, if you're getting 3,000 pounds an acre, this is worth $15 an acre if you're getting a 3,000 pound yield. And, you know, you just think about what our water management services cost, 40 bucks an acre. We can almost pay for that by just using these sustainable practices that we have. So, um, but this is coming. The consumers and, and, and end users are going to demand that, you know, we uh, have traceability and we can share these practices. So I think... Uh, you know, we have all that data for the growers, and, and they're going to be able to use that to get more uh, value for their crops. If they can, they can pull up their Jane logic and show how they're managing water, fertilizer, and energy. They're going to get more for their crops. Period. This is coming. The people That's... that aren't, you know, having this data and aren't doing this will get less for their crops. This is a, you know, what the trends that we're seeing. So for those pioneers that are with us on this journey, we hope to maximize their uh, earnings potential and ROI. Yeah, it's so exciting to see, you know, we had Charles Fishman on a few months ago and he was talking about government incentives to uh, get people to use technology. Now we're seeing other incentives offered other than the government. And uh, I, I think that's really going to kickstart uh, so, some things. And uh, I think that's a generous incentive. So that, that's fantastic. So Eric, if people have questions, uh, want to talk water management with you, uh, want to ask you some questions about technology, uh, how do they get a hold of you? Yeah, there's uh, my, my email uh, contact there, and uh, you can call the Jane office. I'm you know, pretty uh, pretty available. Um, so, yeah, uh, and, yeah, you can go to our website. And, you know, many of our managers, water managers that uh, leaders are on are available to help, too. And, and now I've been a big part of this. I, I really appreciate Jeff, Connor, David, Corey, Stephen, Santino, Ashley, Richard, Gates, John Allen, Bob, Mike Ryan, and the developer, developers in the Ukraine and the development team in Australia, you know, for putting this amazing tools together, right? We get to sell them and talk about them and use them, but, and they're just phenomenal. These tools they've created in, in Jane Logic and Jane Unity or Landscape Offering is, you know, again, saving billions of gallons of water and doing it in a way that's good for the environment. So my hat's off to those, those uh, people. Keep up the great pioneering work. Appreciate it. Yeah, Eric, thanks so much for uh, taking time today to take us through this. I know uh, every time I see you uh, and, and talk water management with you, I always come away uh, knowing more than I, I did when I started. And the demo was fantastic. Uh, I, I know a lot of people are gonna be really enlightened by what you were able to show and uh, so easy to uh, check your progress uh, week to week. Uh, I just love that part. So thank you very much. Thank you to all our viewers. Uh, thanks for checking in with us again today. We really appreciate that. Uh, remember, all our trainings are on the website at USA forward slash trainings. We're also on Spotify, Google, Apple, iHeartRadio podcasts, or probably anywhere that you find your favorite podcasts. I think we're there now. Uh, we're getting a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of people listening to our podcasts now. Uh, it's, it's really getting popular. So thank you, uh, Eric, again, and thanks to all of you. And uh, we will talk to all of you soon. Thank you.
Thank you. Bye-bye.